Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Thank you for joining us on day number two on our product summit with Magaya Corporation. And today is all about freight forwarding. And we really have a jewel for you today. As most of you know, Magaya is known as a freight forwarding software, but there's so much more. And I think some of you saw that yesterday. But we have a great group of people. I myself, Jose Barahona, I'm the Vice President of Sales. I'm joined today by Christian Lillimetz. He is a director of product, and he is very excited to show you all these other great things that they've been working on, kind of like hidden, but now out and about for people to see. Also joining us today is Ms. Laura Finbo. She's the managing director for EMEA, and it's great to have her. She's been with them for four years. Obviously, her trajectory is very long, so she said, Jose, I just want you to share one thing with people today, and I said, great. Let them know I'm based in the U.K., and I'm getting out of the latest lockdown today, December 2nd, and I'm going straight to the hairdresser. So, Laura, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to really showing you what we have going. Now, before we get started, there's a few things that I want to go over just for you to know what we're going to be doing. So, <clears throat> we're going to look at the catapult rate management system. All of you know about rates. In fact, that's all we do. All we do in freight forwarding is manage buying and selling rates. We're going to look at the Catapult and Magaya integration. We're going to see the container track and extension, keeping customers updated with the live track. And finally, look at the QuickBooks Online extension. And Chris will go deeper into this. Now, before we all get started, we will, you will receive a recording, which is great. So you can go back and hear all the great things that are happening. We want you to please participate in the polls. We're going to have a poll early, so please answer as quickly as you can, as best as you can and we'll reach it back to you. We really want to find out where you are, what you need to do, and how we can assist you in being able to get you where you are to where you want to be. And finally, please send us your questions through the Q&A panel. We're very excited for you to join us today. You're in for a big treat. Chris, take it away. Thank you, Jose. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm really happy to be here on the second day of our uh, product summit. It's the first year we do multi-day webinars because we have so much exciting stuff to show you that we just can't fit it in one day. So today, as I said, all freight forwarding. And we start. let's start with the beginning of, of the freight forwarding flow, which is how you manage your rates, your contracts, if you have any, and how you produce quotes to your customers uh, using those rates. Now, Magaya has had that functionality for years, but we also know that it's something that is really hard to do, to get right. And we've received a lot of feedback from our customers over the years that, that the way to manage rates and quote in Magaya isn't the most flexible and it's lacking um, some good integration features and some automation. And so we have really exciting news. I'm sure uh, many of you saw the press releases a couple of months back that Catapult uh, has joined the Magaya family and we are now tightly integrating Magaya with Catapult uh, who have the in my opinion, that's I'm biased, of course, uh, the best uh, rate and contract management system out there. And uh, we're actually going to start with Laura uh, explaining to us or showing to us uh, a little bit of the catapult uh, value and functionality and also, you know, introducing uh, the company and, and, and their way of doing rate and contract management and quoting um in a little bit more detail so so that will be the first part of today and then we'll get back to uh how what you see laura doing during her demo will seamlessly flow into your magaya workflow from there to handle uh bookings and all the operations on the magaya side like you're already used to so that is we're very excited to to start with that uh, without further ado uh, laura uh uh, my bad. <laughs> We're actually going to ask you first something. Uh, I apologize for this. Before Laura's demo, let's actually get a little baseline of how today you all are managing your rates and quotes, right? So we have 
a quick poll here and you participating in this is first of all fun uh, so it's more interactive secondly it will really help us gauge uh, how we can provide more value to you so i encourage everyone to to go and uh, select uh, choices for these questions one and two uh, you can scroll a little bit if all the options for question two are not visible and so the first question is how do you manage your rates today and uh, answers there um, options that you could choose from uh, basically spot rating from carriers to respond to customer quote requests one by one um, then if you do have contracts with carriers then we have two options there one that you have the contracts with all the rates in Magaya the other is that you have them outside of Magaya on documents or spreadsheets or actually if you already use a rate management software that is not Magaya um, and then the last option there as well is that I really there's I don't manage rates using any any software or, or anything digital for that matter right so those would be the options for uh, for us to gauge what the baseline of, of how what how you deal with rates uh, today um, are and then the second question is how is your quoting process how do you how do you quote your customers today so so we have um, three options here because we know we know you all do send quotes so so there's no none or other option there so one email or you know phone call or or, or email body or document attached to an email but basically creating a quote somehow and emailing it to a customer is the first option then for those that use Magaya for this right so you create a quote in Magaya and email it out of Magaya to your customer that is the second option and then a the third option is if you have a another software for 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 sales for quoting uh, for you know a CRM software a QMS or any other type of software with the purpose of creating and sending quotes to your customers. That would be the, uh, the third option. Okay, so we're, we encourage you to, to let us know uh, in questions one and two how you're managing this today. Okay, and it looks like we're good to go. We have a, a, a lot of you already answered. Thank you so much for participating. And now, uh, second try, now I will pass it to Laura. Uh, to take it away with the Catapult QMS. Thank you so much, Christian. Hi, everybody. And uh, thanks so much for choosing to spend your time with us today. I uh, really look forward to introducing you to what we do here at Catapult. So I understand that for many of you, it's going to be the first time you're learning about Catapult and QMS, our rate management software. So I'm really excited to share that with you. Um, and obviously we have recently been welcomed into the Magaya family, um, but uh, let's take a look here at what Catapult have been doing so far. So we've been a trusted partner for freight forwarders for rate management for over 15 years. And uh, there's a number of things that really differentiates us and helps us to have, help our customers succeed by really managing all of their buying and selling rate data accurately and importantly, efficiently. So we have a number of rate partnerships, so we easily can integrate rate data from partners and providers from various modes and sources. So from benchmarking data to promo rates and drayage. We also have invested heavily in integrations with SCL carriers, so the steamship lines, and we've created uh, incredible efficiency with these projects. So they're typically they're issuing large and complex contracts that are really difficult to read, have numerous exceptions and rules and, are very large and amended really frequently. So we know that the market fluctuates hugely and it creates a massive of data that you have to, to sift through. So we digitize this process for you to the benefit of all the parties um, uh, involved. And uh, similarly to this, we also have connections with many of the world's leading LCL co-loaders and that list just keeps on growing. So as we, we build new relationships and get introductions through our network of clients, and uh, we, we add more and more of these connections. So these rates then get populated directly into our rate management platform and are accessible to you. So what about these other providers where you, uh, we don't have a connection where you're getting your rates from? That's no problem. Uh, we can upload, uh, you can upload your own buying and selling rate data, or we can do that for you. So we have a dedicated in-house uh, managed services team who are based in the Philippines. And they're real contract experts. They digitize tens of thousands of contracts every month. So they really understand your, your advisories, the tariffs, and you can really leave that work in our hands with total confidence if that's what you prefer to do too. 
And all of this expertise and knowledge that we've brought together fuels our world-class rates engine and rate management software. QMS has really powerful features, easy to use interfaces and integrations that really create a control tower for all of your rating needs. And that API connectivity is gonna give you access to your rate data wherever you need it, such as in our integration to, to Magaya and to Magaya quoting. Now, why is all of this so important? Well, we know that managing rates poorly really impacts your bottom line every single day uh, and in many ways. So not only do your team spend hours looking up rates or converting them, calculating them, comparing them, <laughs> replicating them, um, we bring all of that uh, together for you. Um, but not only that, but also a quote uh, to your clients with a good margin can very quickly be eroded if you incur unexpected charges or there were inaccuracies in your rates. So from procurement to freight audit all the way through, clear and accurate visibility on your freight rates is really critical to your business. And I'm sure many of you have experienced these challenges um, in, in, your, uh, in your business. So we tackle all of these challenges by digitizing your rate data into a UI that makes your decisions easy. So we easily manage your frequently changing charges and making quoting right first time a breeze from a laptop or even a mobile device. So that when your sales team are on the road, you get incredible speed to market when you're quoting. So without further ado, uh, the moment you've been waiting for, a brief demo of QMS. Uh, what we'll do here is we will search for a rate in the system, view the details of that rate, prepare and send a quotation, and look at that quote history. And from there, we're going to create a tariff filing also from that quote. So I'm gonna share my screen here so that we can get started. Okay, so QMS is a fully cloud-based system. We're logged in here and we're showing our dashboard. Uh, at the top here, you've got some report cards. These are really an activity snapshot and that show you um, some of your quote history, your win ratio, the average margins that you're making, the number of quotations made within the parameters. So there's a lot of power behind all of this to determine what's the scope you're looking at here. Further down here, we have your notifications uh, or message board uh, where you can uh, put in notifications towards your users or there's some automated notifications too. So when we release new features to the system, we'll no notify you directly here. When new rates are released into the system, you'll also see them here directly in the feed. So it makes it really accessible for you and just reduces the number of emails that we need to communicate these things. You can also create your own news items here for the message board, which might be about rates or operational uh, issues. So for example, if there's a port closure or a GRI, or you have a new vendor that you're working with and you wanna alert everybody using the system um, to that and keep everybody on the same page. So a little navigation here. On the top right here, we have our control panel. We're not gonna spend so much time on that today, but there are a lot of power features over here um, that we can really uh, explore with you and share with you in, uh, in follow-up sessions. So a lot of things going on in the background. I'll try to talk to them, uh, talk to them a little bit through the demo, but uh, we won't go into too much detail. We really want to focus on that core activity today of searching for rates, comparing the results and creating quotations. We come here on the left-hand side, just see we've got the hamburger menu and then the icons here. I'm going to go to the rate search icon we're gonna fill out a search. So it's a single lane search. You can also search for multiple uh, rates within the system, your quoting history and your file tariffs, but we're gonna go straight into a single lane search. If I drop down here to the mode, we're going to create an FCL search today, but you could also be searching for air rates, ground rates or LCL. So an FCL rate search for dry containers. We can also here select the equipment sizes that we wanna search for. So we're just going to search for a 40 foot high cube. And then here we're going to put in our location. So we're going to create a search for Jamen to Los Angeles. Okay. 
So I've got a couple of icons here. I'm just going to explain briefly what they mean. We've got the VIA toggle, which I can switch on and off. This means you can refine your search further by looking for only rates that uh, follow a certain routine. We have here the little truck icon. This indicates that this is a door location and I want to add trucking. We're going to do a CY to CY search today, so I'm going to leave that as it is. And then here we have this little chain icon here. And if I link that up, what that's going to do, it's a feature called city linking, and it allows you to return rates for near ports. So you will be able to group together um, ports that are in close proximity with one another that might be interchangeable for your purposes. So that will help you get more results and more options coming back. So I'm going to leave that city linking on here for this search. We then got our validity period. It's just going to default out to the next month. Uh, but you can do backdated searches in the system. And then here we've got a pricing option. So you can limit your, your results so that it'll give you a total price based on prepaid or collect charges, or even on your INCO terms. We're going to leave it open right now. I have a number of other search criteria. Furthermore, you can customize this panel to add even more search um, criteria to it. So you can have a really refined um, search experience. But to get plenty of results, we're just going to go ahead and search simply with an origin and a destination with our city linking activated so that we get a decent number of um, options to choose from. So when we hit the search button, the system is going to go and read all of our loaded contracts. It's going to call live APIs for rates and look up information such as schedule information and free time information to return everything you need to make the right decision. So here we are in the results screen. So you'll see it's re returning all of the results in a kind of a grid layout. It's really familiar and easy to use for most people. And then here on the right hand side, you'll see we've got the number of rates that have returned. So I've got 10 options have returned here. And because I had that city linking activated, you can see I've also returned options for both Long Beach and Los Angeles here. It's telling me I have some different options. The icons that you see over here on the left are another feature of the system. So these are really handy. You can create your own rules to highlight certain rates and we call this rate prioritization. So you could use this to indicate your preferred providers or for commercial information or uh, other kinds of users during operational alerts. So if we have a look here and hover over here, it's saying there's severe congestion. So this is a rule that's been set up to highlight that in Los Angeles, there's severe congestion, there's a risk of congestion charges, delays, divergent detention. So that's going to alert, uh, alert you to think, okay, I need to also check here, what is my free time? Maybe I'm going to go for a rate that's a slightly longer transit time or a higher, um, a higher rate, knowing that I'm going to get that extra free time at the destination. If I hover over here on these uh, evergreen spot rates, it's warning me this is a spot rate, so I need to check the expiration because the way that the evergreen spot API works is it's going to give me different rates with different lengths of validity. So I have several different options. So let's have a look up here and take one of these examples. Uh, if we take the first rate here uh, from evergreen. And I can see that I've got here a 14 days free time, which is looking better than the four days that I have down here. So it's a good option for me to use right now. So if I select this rate, uh, then it's going to populate over here on the right hand side in the information panel. Just before we delve into this rate a little further, I just want to highlight to you that here we can toggle between this grid view, which is used for your power users. It's fully customizable with the customize button. You can get lots of information here for your decision making and can really customize to your own preferences. If I click on the visual view, you'll see what this layout looks like or get a sense of what this looks like on your mobile device. So you see that these rate cards here are lined up and they're about the width of a mobile phone screen. Uh, and on a tablet, you're going to get those too wide. So this is your visual view of how the system looks in that, uh, in that view. So for a desktop user, We've got the grid view, the selected array, and now we're seeing all of the details over here on the right hand side. So if I look at first the details tab here at the top, I've got um, my routing and my provider and the total price. And the total price is based on the income terms and the search parameters that I put in. And then here underneath, I've got a little row of icons here. We're going to delve into each one of these. 
I'm actually going to take one. This one. Take this one, but long shit. Okay. So details here, if I scroll down, you see this is all the header information from a contract, the effective date, the expiration date, the amendment ID, any commodity exclusions, contract notes, named accounts, and you can even add critical notes for you here that pop up um, where you can't continue to work with the rate without um, clicking on that. So we've got a, a lot of information here um, about the contract that this rate has come from specifically. I click over here onto the next tab. This is where we're going to see all of the details of the rate. So here it's going to really break down that rate. So at the top, I've got a total buy price, a total sale price, and a margin of $150. So where does that margin come from? Uh, in the engine, we have a margin access control tool. And in there, you can again use rules-based engine to apply margins automatically. So this can really save you time when you're quoting. If you get these rules set up right, you don't need to manipulate rates very much in order to quote them out from the system. You can use all of the parameters in the rules-based engine to automatically create selling prices on the back of your buying, uh, buying rate data. So looking down further here, you see I've got a toggle here for my buy and my sell, and also grouped by charge class. So that's telling me what I'm looking at here and living in the screen. So if I Customize here, I could, for example, organize the charges by prepaid and collect, and then I'll get a subtotal of my collect charges and my prepaid charges, for example. Typically, most of our customers prefer to use the charge class, uh, but again, that one can be set up as for your preferences. So if I look at the buy rate data here, um, you'll see that I've got a full copy here of the selling rate information as well. So you've always got a record of the buying rate and the selling rate that you're putting out to your customers. So before we go ahead and work a little more uh, with the rate, I just want to talk about the source of where some of this data is coming from. So if I hover here over the base rate, you just see there it's probably pretty small, but you can see surcharge origin, trial evergreen contracts. This is a dummy contract, but it's telling me that this, this particular price has come from a contract. If I start scrolling down here, this has also come from the contract, but here I get the advanced manifest charge. This is coming from Catapult's floating tariff. And this is tariff data that we maintain for all FMC trades. And it's pulling actually in live values to give you a complete and up-to-date rate. If I start scrolling down here a little further, for example, here, this admin fee, you'll see the origin EFT. What this means is it's coming from the surcharge manager. This is where we created, again, a rules-based engine where you can apply your local charges. So for example, your administration fee or your customs fee that can be applied dynamically to the rates as they're searched. So you've got a lot of different sources and you've got an engine behind working on your margins here to tell, to really give you a complete and accurate rate picture. So before we manipulate this rate further and create it for a quotation, I'm just gonna go over the other tabs here. So we have the schedule data here. So you can see when the next sailings are, if we expand on one of those sailings, then you'll also see information such as the transshipment ports. Uh, here we've got the vessel name, the flag, um, the service loop. You'll also see transshipment ports if the data is available. So here you've got all of your sailing options and those can feed through into your quote forms too. They can also send them out to you. If I click on the last one here, free time, so you see I've got a toggle here for origin free time, destination free time. If the free time came from your contract, then that would take precedence here. If the free time doesn't come from your contract, we also offer a service of providing tariff free time information. So the number of free days of demurrage and detention, and then the charges that follow thereafter. I want to come back to the charges panel here and just look at finish up uh, creating this rate for, for a customer. So I've got a margin of $150 applying at the moment. Uh, if I scroll right down here, you see I've got a number of options that I can manipulate the rate further. So I can add a new charge, for example. So if there's something I didn't have in my engine, that I didn't have in the surcharge manager or in the contract that I need to add ad hoc, I can simply do it by adding it here, typing in the charge name, determining the buy and the sell price, or indeed if there is no buy price and it's just a selling tariff, and then specifying what type of charge it is, current, future charges, future charges can be shown in here too, with a future validity. 
If it's prepaid or collect, the charge class and then the unit as a bill of lading, as a container, or if you're looking at LCL or air, for example, then you'd see weight measure charges, for example, as an option. So that's adding a new charge, adding a margin. So maybe I want to add just a little more margin. I can come in here and use a percentage or a value to add more margin. And I can also choose which charge that applies here to this specific rate that I want to add that margin to. So I add it to my base rate and there we go. We've just increased the base rate and we've got a slightly larger margin there. Coming down again, um, some further options we have to manipulate the rate. So you'll see here, if you look at this rate, I've got an awful lot of included charges here showing uh, towards the customer. And you might say, okay, on my buying rate, that's what I'm gonna to expect to see from, um, from my provider. And when I do my freight audit, I wanna make sure that I'm not getting charged these things. But towards my customer, I don't want them to show that. So a simple way of using remove charges, for example, is to just remove all the charges that have zero value on the selling side. So that's the default here for this button. I can simply click that and remove those charges. I can also take advanced options and remove, for example, uh, future charges or prepaid or collect charges. We made it really easy to simply manipulate en masse the rate that's going to be presented towards the customer. And the final option I want to show you here is the roll up charges. So I click that button. What it's automatically going to do is simply give me all of the different um, charges and roll them all up into one to create an all in rate. But what I can also do is say, well, you know what? My administration fee needs to be separate. So I'm just going to deselect that. And I can create an all-in price for the customer with a separated admin fee. And on the buy side, I still have everything broken out. And on the sell side, I've really cleaned that up for the customer. So really easy to manipulate the rates. There are also features to do this en masse for all of the rates and the rate results. So you don't have to keep repeating the process. When the rate's ready to quote out, we put it up into our shopping cart here. And we can go ahead and we can select additional rates and add them to the shopping cart until we're ready to create the quotation. We can make new searches and add those to the cart. Let's just quote this one rate out of the system for now. So if I use this icon over here, send the quote, we'll enter into a three-step quoting process. So the first step is to review the cart. Now, provided I'm happy and confident everything's okay, I just click next. However, if we've got a lot of rates in here or you recognize something is wrong, your margin is too high or too low and you want to make the last minute change, we've made it so that you don't have to go back into searching again, you don't have to go back into the previous range. You can simply select that rate and change it right here. It will pop up in the info panel and you can make any last second changes like that. So let's go through to the next step. So in the next step here, we're going to select our customer. So you've got your customers loaded up in the system. It's very easy to put in the name of the company and then you're going to see your address book and select the customer from it and you can simply add and remove additional recipients like this. So now we know who we're sending this quote to, to so Bob's widgets, to go to the next and final step. There's a powerful quote form builder within Catapult QMS where you can design your own quote forms. So in this case, um, here we already have a quote form selected for us and again all of the work that you do in the system can make this process very very easy but then we give you the added benefit of lots of options and lots of power if you want to make changes on the fly so at this point i could for example uh, change the type of quote form that i'm using and you'll see that that changes and renders immediately on the screen to a different kind of layout so you can have all your quote forms all your dis disclaimers everything that you need in here You'll also see then I have the rating options. I can switch on and off different features right within this specific quote form as well. So for example, if I wanna show the exchange rate, I can toggle that on. If I don't wanna show the scheduled information this time around, I can toggle that off. So I can make changes on the fly and it's gonna render here on the screen. The other thing you'll notice is I've got these accept and reject buttons here on the screen. And those are gonna work for your customer. So if I send out this quotation, it's going to send them the email and then when this quote uh, reaches them and is confirmed it's actually going to uh, create that quotation in in the guy in your system so here i have my uh, mailbox for bob's widgets so it's just a gmail box that i just set, got set up here to show you that uh, quotation coming in and then here in qms it's going to move into our quote history 
So here, if I take a look in my quote history, I've again got my search panel here. I'm just going to toggle this over to look for the quoted date and search. And it's a very similar experience. I've got this grid view with lots of different fields um, to help me locate uh, any quote that I want. And I can see it here in my quote history. And from here, I can, I can copy it, I can refresh it, and I can also uh, file the tariff. So let's look at what that looks like to the customer. Okay. Here we go. So here at Bob's Widgets, they received the quotation. If we open it out, you'll see that they've got it rendering on the message and also as an attachment. So either way, and either from the attachment or the email itself, they can accept or reject the quote. So if your customer goes ahead and accepts that quote, we say we're going to confirm then that status will change back in the system. And what that means is that, hold on, hold on, I'm just gonna open up here. You have the option to add additional uh, shipment details here. So they can add more information about the number of containers, um, the shipper name, commodity, and the ship date that they prefer, and also the reason why they accept or reject, or reject the quotation. So you have a number of uh, different options there that the customer can also fill out. So coming back from the email, back into the system here, into my quote history, once the customer has accepted the quote, then the status of the quote will change to one. And once that quote is one, then it's going to flow through into your Magaya system. The last step that I wanted to show you right here today was the ability to create and file a tariff very easily from a quoted rate. So I got my rate, my, my rate here in the system. So this is my quote to Bob's widgets here from Shenmin to Los Angeles. And I'm going to go ahead and file a tariff. So I click file tariff. It pops open the detail panel here on the right hand side. And I can simply go ahead and edit this, um, this tariff filing. So I need to complete some details here. I need to add the commodity information. So if, for example, I need to add a new commodity, I can do that right from here, or I can select a commodity from my saved uh, tariff commodities. So from the tariff module, you create your standard commodities, you can select it from there. Let me change my publication type, effective date, expiration date, the rate basis, and also I can add any additional notes or information here. You can also add internal notes that won't be published um, but will be visible to your internal users. So if I save that, and here I can see all of the right information, I just have to click plus, and it's going to run it through the process of a tariff filing. It's going to compare um, this with all of my other filed tariffs. It's going to check on the basis of origin, destination, whether it's hazardous or not, the size and type of the equipment, and also the commodity. And it's either going to give me a green light to say there's no conflicts, or a red light to say there's a duplication or a conflict so that we are not compliant or in this case it's giving me an orange orange light to tell me to check because there's a really similar rate within the system however if i'm happy to go ahead i can simply publish the rate it will create a tariff filing id and that will be stored within the system uh, with complete compliance and retrievable here from the tariff filing um, search window So that concludes the process today. I hope it gave you a good oversight of what we can do in Catapult QMS and how we can help you manage your rates. Um, it's a really easy way to get all of your rates in one place, to digitize, manage your margins, and quote, uh, create amazing looking quotes towards your customers, as well as integrating into your Magaya platform. This is Absolutely amazing. Thank you, Laura. Um, I hope you all are equally impressed with, um, with, with Catapult and the, and the uh, demo that Laura just showed us. We actually have, um, oh, that was a link I clicked on. <laughs> we actually have a little uh, poll for you to, to um, show uh, what you think about 
uh, catapult what you preferred the most out of uh, what you just saw. So Laura, do you want to kind of walk us through uh, this poll? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Christian. We're really interested to hear today, um, you know, the features that you think are really going to help you the most. So we want to understand the challenges that you have today. So we tried to touch a little bit on you know, how the dynamic surcharge data can pull into the system, how we can use different sources of information, um, like our floating tariff of FMC tariff charges, like the surcharge manager rules-based engine to get your local charges to calculate into your prices. Um, so that's really the first point that we have here, you know, how valuable is that? Is that really a key priority to you and something you've really experienced challenges with? Then we have this ability for quoting to your clients and tracking the results. You know, how do you quote today? Is this something that can really add value to you? Having that ability to use different quote forms, um, to design them, to have your customers accept and decline rates um, online and capture the outcome and the results. Then on top of that, of course, you're getting your analytics for tracking wins and losses and margins. So do you have insight into that today? Is that something that can really add value to you? Is that very important for you to be able to, to track? Um, you know, which of these features do you really think are the most valuable for you? Then tariff publishing. Um, obviously, we went over this really quickly today, but it is extremely easy to uh, file your tariffs from within the Catapult QMS. Um, including doing bulk uploads to file multiple uh, tariffs at once. And finally, something that we didn't really talk about today, but we know is really interesting to a lot of our customers who are um, aspiring to be or are digital freight forwarders, who want to offer the customers a branded customer facing front end where they can look up their own rates and search for their own um, information and, uh, and communicate their bookings back or their rate selections back to you directly and that's also something that we can help you with so we'd really like to know uh, which of these items uh, really resonate with you the most and where we can be of the most help to you all right thank you um thank you laura and thank you for everyone participating in the poll it it really helps us uh, to see where your priorities lie and uh, in the meantime i would encourage all of you to type in your questions uh, into the Q&A section. So if you look in the in the webinar, there's either a bottom or a top bar or somewhere in, on your screen, there should be a Q&A um, area where you can type in your questions. We will address those questions in the end. I will take an exception right now because uh, Carlos just asked, how does this new feature, uh, uh, how can you convert a, a quote into a Magaya shipment? And actually that is the next part of our demo so so a perfectly timed question there um and we're going to we're going to continue with magaya now in 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 our demo what we have what we are currently building uh and have planned for the integration between catapult and magaya so the first stage and what i'm going to show you uh shortly a, a, like a development version of it it is currently in development. What you're seeing is not in production yet. It will be out, we hope, in January, but definitely in Q1, uh, would be to have the Catapult approved quote that you just saw the fictional customer um, accept, uh, Bob's widgets, flow from Catapult to Magaya. So, so we will have a quote in Magaya. We'll start with FCL and then we'll do other modes uh, once FCL is out, because FCL is, uh, we found out the most common and the, we wanted to start with something something small and deliver that that uh, value to you first and, and start involving some of you who are interested in being early adopters or beta testers to actually try this out with us, this integration, right? And then we have many other features that we could possibly integrate between the two systems. Uh, and we are, you know, talking to customers conducting interviews open to all of your feedback. So, so uh, in the follow-up email of this webinar, there'll be contacts uh, in Magaya and Catapult who, who can help you or who, who you can uh, talk to who, if you want to be you know, involved and, and help us uh, prioritize how to move on with this because we, you know, Catapult and Magaya are the same company now. So this is going to be our big strategic priority to really make those, uh, those products work seamlessly together. Uh, so so uh, 
it is, we're, we're very excited to, to, to keep going with this, right? So I'll also, I'll do now before switching to the Magaya demo, I'll do a little intro to what else this demo will show. So we'll start the demo with the quote that Laura just uh, got accepted by her customer in Catapult. So we'll start the demo with the quote, but then we'll, we'll go on from that quote to booking and shipment in Magaya. And we will show another great feature that we're releasing this month from Magaya, which is the container tracking uh, extension. So if, if you remember, this was a quote for one 40 foot high cube, right? So, so we will actually use a real container number to show you live data, um, tracking data about this container and how this flows into Magaya and from there to live track for you to keep your customers informed. So, so, we, so it's kind of going to be a hybrid demo showing the end of the quoting process and then moving on to the quote to booking to shipment and track the container, right? So, so I will um, just a little bit about the container tracking. This is another feature that a lot of you have been asking for years. Uh, you know, what, what's the problem we're trying to solve here? I'm, I'm sure this hypothetical workflow rings a bell for many of you that, that how, how time consuming it currently is to, to keep your customers, um, to keep your customers up to date uh, with with the status of the of, of the container, so so you know you receive some kind of input from customers, whether it be a call or email, and to really go to the Sea Line website and try to find the status about the, of the container and and copy and paste and maybe keep some kind of a spreadsheet, and then try to reach the customer back. Maybe they're out of the office when you're calling them back or or, or sending the email. It's just it's it's a lot of time uh, wasted. We've heard by a lot of our customers in, in this manual process. And we're going to show what we came up with as a solution. Uh, it's an extension to Magaya that tracks your containers from your shipment and adds the live real-time status updates back to the shipment as events. Uh, and obviously those events can shoot out emails from Magaya. That's already existing functionality. and push notifications to live track uh, on your customer's uh, mobile device. So that is, that is the extension that we're going to show. So like just the value in, 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 in a nutshell, you can start tracking all the containers with just one click from the shipment. Anytime a new update comes from the container, it is posted as an event to the shipment and um, you can share the types of events you want with uh, through live track with your customer. So, so you don't even have to get back to the customer, live track keeps them updated, right? Um, some of the events that we have here, just uh, and as an example, from the origin side, we're tracking uh, these typical uh, origin port events through our, our um, API. We have transshipment options if it's a transshipment. And then uh, the destination port side events uh, are, are the following. We'll see an example. Uh, of some of them. And um, finally, we also have a separate type of event that we generate when we, when we notice that the ETA that was sent in our last tracking request has changed. So, so you would have a Magaya an ETA update type of event if, if, if there you know, was a delay or, or other type of ETA update. This is just a, a long list um, just to show that we, I think we're about about 70 with our, with our uh, container tracking API right now of uh, uh, carriers that we get events uh, from or we, we track containers with. All right, so let's actually go through and show this. So again, um, we'll start here. And I see it, by the way, I see questions and uh, questions coming into the QA panel. That's great, uh, keep, keep, keep that up. We will um, address them at the end. All right. And, and uh, we have actually other panelists here. We have uh, Pedro, the product manager for container tracking. We have Laura and we have also Alison on the catapult side. Uh, so some of your questions, they, they may even uh, already type the answer directly to you, but uh, we'll also read out the, uh, the more interesting ones to everyone. Uh, right. So here uh, we are, uh, the top quotation there in this uh, Magaya quote list is the one that we saw um, as you saw also the right-hand column there imported from Catapult. This, this already came in from Catapult. Again, this is a, a still in, in a development phase. Um, 
So let's look at this quote and go ahead and, um, yep, so we have it's an incoming shipment from, we have Bob's widgets as uh, the customer, uh, 140 foot high cube. Let's look at the routing. We have, uh, it's from Xiamen to Los Angeles. And if you look at all the charges, they should be the same that uh, came from Laura's quote. As you saw, there was the admin fee in addition to the all-in sales fee and a bunch of different costs. Of course, the costs won't show on the quote form in Magaya. Those are just later um, for the shipment liquidation, right? And so let's go ahead and let's create, uh, let's just go through quickly create a booking from here. That is a standard Magaya workflow. I know a lot of you don't use quotes in Magaya because of, um, of uh, so far our rate management system not being quite as flexible as, as, as uh, some of you need. So, but this is the, uh, you know, uh, the, the first step of the workflow also in Magaya that you start with a quote. But so now what we've done is that we've added the option to get this quote from you know, all the power that you saw uh, catapult offer. So let's just go ahead and create a booking here from this quote so you can send the booking confirmation for a customer. Again, they can even, uh, even receive a notification from uh, live track through this or an automated email. And for the container tracking to work, actually, let's say we already know the container number at this point, we got it uh, on the carrier. So we can put it, put it in here already. So this is going to be the actual um, container that we'll be tracking in the container tracking part of this demo that comes right in the next step on the shipment, right? So we have this booking here. We don't have to, uh, let, let's just accept this. We, there are, you know, this is a standard Magaya workflow for those of you that uh, do bookings. We can send this, um, this booking confirmation by email or tracking link or, or automated push notification to your customer, right? So let's go ahead and create like a straight shipment out of this uh, booking and get to the container tracking part, right? So let's um, just select the container. We can use the same booking reference number for simplicity to be the shipping num uh, shipment number as well. And we get to we get to a shipment in Magaya. So this is uh, a question that Carlos was asking earlier. How does this connect to the shipment in Magaya? That's what you just saw. So we do quotation, accept it from catapult to quotation in Magaya. And then the Magaya quote gives you all the options what you want as the next steps to be. We didn't want to limit this to push it straight into a shipment in Magaya because some of you do booking, some of you don't. Some of you do pickup orders and warehouse receipts from a quote and then shipment. So we're going to leave all those workflows in Magaya open so you can keep working as your operations team is currently working, just adding in front of it the, the, the catapult piece for, for rate management and quoting. Okay, so this is our shipment. Um, we can look at, uh, you know, uh, just to verify everything, everything seems correct here. We have uh, Bob's widgets as the customer. Uh, the same uh, origin destination, the charges. And I would really leave us here on the events tab, which we currently have empty. So the events tab is what you can already use to keep, to give milestones to your customers, right? Uh, you can add them manually. Some of them come from intra integrations. We have e-airway bill on the air site that produces events here. So now container tracking is going to be one of those add-ons to Magaya that feeds events into this tab that, you know, in turn then uh, displays them in live track for your customer. So currently it's empty and let's start tracking this container and let's see what we can pull um, to add information, to add data about this uh, container into Magaya, right? So it opens a little um, extension window that we built uh, externally of Magaya uh, with a nice user interface. And currently, so what it's doing, it, it is sending the request to our provider to get all this data about this container. The little green checkbox there shows that, okay, now it's updated. Uh, we can look at the details of this container in this interface as well. It shows, uh, you know, nice uh, milestones there, it shows that it's uh, currently in transit to LA. And, uh, you know, a couple more things there and trying to also estimate what is the final um, 
a rival to POD actually. Uh, that is, you get you get future and past events as soon as you start tracking. So had you start tracking this container, if we close this now and look in Magaya, we see that there's actually a bunch of events already from past days as well because we just started tracking this container now. But had you started tracking on on uh, this one on November 10th, they would have come one by one uh, as well, right? So here um, at this point we can we can uh, take a uh, we can switch over to live track actually and see how your customer would be informed um, of these updates, right? So, so let, let me share my screen here with my phone. I hope that all works nicely. Okay, let's see. All right, and uh, just to make sure, uh, Pedro, did you save that shipment? So this is this should be all good. Okay. So you should be able to see my uh, phone screen, right, where I have the uh, the live track app open, and I'm actually, you know, currently. So this is now I am Bob's widgets, the customer, right? Your customer who you give access to live track, so they can they don't have to call you or email you, or you don't have to get back to them. With um, with updates, right? So so Live Track has this notifications part built in, where I can go ahead and and set what I want uh, push notifications for. So here I, I I can say that okay, I want to be notified on new events on every shipment. So in this case, if I look at my shipments here, let's refresh this list. So the last one here. all of the um, events that we saw coming from container tracking with the container number, they're nicely in here for your customer. And uh, the, the notification went away already. I didn't share the screen quick enough. So, so uh, it would you know, pop up at the top of the screen like your phone notifications uh, do when a new event is added. I don't know better if you want to manually put an event here. Uh, in Magaya, so so we see the pop-up, but um, and a little uh, triangle on the on the top right shows that there are new events that I haven't viewed yet on this previous shipment, for example. So uh, looks like this was this has been delivered, so I didn't see that event yet, right? So so that is the um, live track portion added on to container tracking and and other um, features that we have that. That involve customer service, right? So I'll um, stop sharing the. Oh, there you go. There's my new uh, shipment or new booking notification actually coming. And if I refresh this, okay, now the shipment shows in transit, and and uh, different events again, right? Test event that uh, Pedro here just added. All right. So let's go back to the. Uh, presentation here. So this was the container tracking portion of today's demo. Uh, we have uh, again type in your questions and answers, and we can we'll finally show very quickly how this workflow ends or how to tie this up by sending this invoice if you use QuickBooks Online uh, to your accounting system QuickBooks Online. Right. So just here very quickly, uh, problem we're solving that was that really the connection to QuickBooks is something essential for a lot of small businesses. And we didn't want you to have to build that connection through third parties. So we have an extension that you're about to see that sends the invoices and bills from Magaya with a couple of clicks to QuickBooks Online. It actually works in batch as well. You can send, it sends like up to 500 in less than three minutes in our tests so far, right? And you can map the entities in Magaya and uh, QuickBooks so that you don't you, you don't have to do this every time. You map one charge one time, one client one time, and then every other time this client or, or particular charge comes up on invoices, it goes to QuickBooks seamlessly as we're about to see now. And if some entities or charges don't exist in QuickBooks yet, you can uh, add them from Magaya to QuickBooks while transmitting this first invoice, right? So let's uh, let's go ahead and quickly show uh, the invoice. So Pedro will now go ahead and liquidate this shipment. So we're actually following the same flow. So this is the invoice that 
when the job is done, you, you, that came from the quote that um, Laura um, uh, made in Catapult that Bob's widgets, your customer accepted. And now we're going to, and the charges came to Magaya and now we're going to uh, generate that invoice. Okay, so the invoice is done. So let's go take a look. It also created the bills expected from the carrier, right? They're the accounts payable. And if we go to the invoice, see nicely as, as you're used to seeing in Magaya's invoices, the shipment reference data all there. You got your base rates and your admin fee. And let's push this to QuickBooks as the last part of today's demo to show again, something new that we recently released. Okay, so it opens again a little extension window that loads the invoice. And again, here, there are no conflicts to solve. We've already mapped these charges in this customer. So we can just click send and it should just go. Otherwise you can solve the conflicts right here. Okay, so it was successfully sent. We can go ahead and even look at it in, if we refresh our invoices in our QuickBooks online, it should show. So this was the last part of today's demo. And we're um, running pretty tight against time here, but let's start taking the questions and answers. Oh, there's our invoice. Okay, so we have, um, let's see, Q and A. All right, do we have any, any questions and answers uh, already answered by the other panelists? Jose, do you wanna take some? Have you, have you picked out your favorites already? Or Laura? For Allison, I, I was hoping for you to help me. I'll do the honors in uh, asking them for you, and then maybe you can show some of your screens or provide additional information. Um, I have one for uh, Carlos was asking, you know, a couple questions. But if you have an independent tracking company, he's saying, how can you convert a quote to a guy into a shipment? Um, independent trucking company. So let's say that you don't want those truck rates to come from catapult uh, in this, or, or I'm not entirely sure I understand the question. We'll get we'll back to Mr. Park in a minute. Um, okay. Someone asked, Adam asked, hey, uh, will this require an intro with the container tracking function? Uh, no, this is, uh, we, are, we are using for this, uh, for this uh, extension, a, a separate provider. So this is not related to intra. If you are using intra as well, our current intra integration does bring updates too if you filed the shipping instructions from Magaya to intra. So this one here, the new one that we're showing does not require you to, to, to file anything. You, all, all you need to do is have a container number um, on the shipment in Magaya and just click track and, and that's it. It will, it will query against our, our um, tracking provider uh, these uh, uh, with this container number. Great. Um, someone says, hey, you have a great Magaya workflow. Can you share an end-to-end -end workflow? Um, so yes, again, the end-to-end -end can, can vary um, a lot with, uh, depends on, on how, if you handle cargo physically yourself, for example. If you're a consolidator doing exports and you have a warehouse, the workflow would of course look different. It would still start from a quote. Uh, it, it, it can, uh, but it, you know, you would then possibly do a pickup order to, to pick up the cargo and bring it to your warehouse and load the containers and, and then do an export shipment from there. Like this was a very quick import, you know, pure freight forwarding, no physical handling of cargo um, quote to a booking confirmation to uh, an import shipment type of workflow. So the end to end can vary here. Great, Chris, thank you. Uh, this one here, is it possible to prepare, oops, sorry, wrong one here. I already asked that one. Are we able to add custom manual milestone, milestone events? That's the first question and it follows up by, do these have any corresponding event codes? Uh, yes, so so the, the, um, the live track functionality that you saw where, where new events push notifications to your customers and, and they can, by the way, also shoot out emails from Magaya um, based on just one event, right? Uh, those events can be added manually in Magaya. Um, and even with, with some 
logic automatically that let's say you change the shipment status in Magaya and it puts an event there and, and shoots a notification. So those custom custom events can definitely be added. That's that's an existing functionality. And then we just what we're doing is we're enriching that in event table with different integrations. So again, mentioned already intra, this container tracking you saw today, e-airway bill if you're doing air, um, et cetera. Great, Chris. Thank you. Uh, can invoices be out of sync with QuickBooks desktop version? So uh, this is a two-part question. Uh, I guess the auto sync, we, we will answer that this is, it's not automa automatic. You would have to push them from Magaya, uh, but you can do them in batch. So you can make it like one daily operation saying, okay, all my invoices just, just that I haven't been exported to QuickBooks yet. Let me just select them all and send them in batch. So, so that uh, makes it much faster than doing one by one. And the other part is QuickBooks desktop. And that is, uh, that is currently a no, we, we, we went with QuickBooks online because that's kind of what, what Intuit is promoting heavily as well. And their, their integration capabilities and, and API was, was, was uh, much uh, better and easier for the online version. We started with there. If, if there's a lot of uh, need for also integrating with QuickBooks desktop in a similar manner, um, we will definitely consider it, but currently it's QuickBooks Online only. Thank you, Chris. Um, I have one more here. It says, is it possible to prepare a cloak from air consolidated shipments? Example, one master for houses. So this, um, I wonder if this is um, more of a catapult question as well. Well, for on the Magaya side, let's say, Yes, uh, you can have a, your consolidation, both on the air and ocean side, the master, you can have it prepared, right? And then as you get new quotes accepted by your customers on a, you know, by house, you can, that quote to booking that you saw in Magaya and then the booking to shipment, that booking could have, instead of creating a straight shipment, like we, like we did now, it could have created an additional house to an already existing consolidation under under an already existing master. So so it is in that sense, in a Magaya workflow sense, it's a yes. Uh, I know Laura mentioned, but didn't um, demo today how you can create you know multiple uh, different uh, quotes in one kind of in, in catapult. So Laura, if you want to add something there. Yeah. So for, for example, you can create uh, individual quotes uh, for each of the houses. You can also create. Um, Multi so if you're doing an air quote, you would um, insert your weights and dimensions for each particular part of the shipment and to search for the, so the four pieces, the four parts you could uh, create quotations for and then quote them in one master quote ID. And each of those four pieces would then be child quotes. All right. Um, thank you, Laura. So we have uh, gotten a couple of questions I already mentioned in the chat as well by by Laura and Alison. So let's see. We have one about, did we already answer the one about integrating rates from vendors uh, directly, right? Looks like that one is answered by chat. Okay, uh, and so it looks like we're, we're done with the questions today, uh, we went a few minutes over. I hope that, uh, uh, that, that you all enjoyed the webinar today and, and you will receive uh, follow-up emails with the link to re-watch uh, this if you, if you want to share this with, uh, with people you work with to, to show new and exciting stuff that we have. And uh, also, you know, we may reach out to you based on what you, your questions were. Uh, if, we, if, if you'd like, we'd like to, you know, uh, discuss more about some of these topics or what you said in the poll. So, uh, and also if you're interested in, in any of these functionality, we will have contacts in the follow-up email um, who in Magaya uh, you, can, you can talk to about this and, and, and get maybe further in-depth demos or uh, talk about you know, uh, future functionality or the future of, the, of, of, of this integration as well. Yes, Laura, thank you very much. It was a great day number two. I think you guys done fantastic. So thank you everyone for joining us and looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Thank you everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.